Ark Survival Evolved. It's a funny old game, one that has developed throughout its maturation stage to an almost unrecognisable iteration of its former self, way back in its early access of June 2015. That's right, of this year it will turn the ripe age of six. A number of years that would of course see many of you sample its open-worldly dinosaur survival rabbit hole and likely have borrowed out to other games. Whether you left on a bad note, lost interest, or needed to go cold turkey from a survival fueled crack adventure, here's five reasons why Ark is worth playing again in 2021. You're right kids, it's Ras Clark. And before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and share around, and let's get into it. It comes as no surprise that this will be the biggest and final draw for Ark this year. Offering an expansion to the Dino Survival Universe unlike anything we've ever seen to date. Beyond the obligatory new map, set entirely on a giant colony spaceship, housing a wealth of island sized biomes, all of which seem to hint at the landscapes you know, revitalised for its lineup of wildlife. And what a wildlife it appears to be, not only bringing new variants of the towns you love, but containing space bike dubbed mini space whales nurse nipple attacking flying squirrels, organic harvesting atats, stealthy war crying nimble lions and hypnotising you into backstabbing your friends goblins. And those are just the additions we know so far, with I'm sure more to be revealed as we approach the release date. Pens as coming to us in March of this year, Genesis Part 2 is much much more than a new map that looks to complete the Ark Survival Evolve storyline with us seemingly facing off against the mutated David Tennant voicing Rockwell fused biome. Yes, he actually is a living, breathing biome attempting to take over the ship. The tech embracing DLC that literally starts you off with a new flying tech suit will be bringing a wide range of weapons, gear and structures that will transform the survival metas we've been used to in Ark for so long now. Whilst I covered all of this in a previous video in great detail, which you really should check out if you haven't already, I'll leave a link in the description, Ark 2021 will be a totally different game of survival with automatic baby raisers, egg detailing incubators, quick loadout wardrobes, spy cam security systems, and my favourite, ammo boxes to automatically distribute to your turrets. And again, this is all we know so far reshaping Ark to something very different from the laborious grind we're used to. It certainly feels that Wildcard are experimenting as much as they can with their last map, in development of their fully fledged sequel Ark 2, to see which of these huge leaps in the survival handbook we'll take to and expect a normality as we go next gen. Riding cover sails, making tech crock pots and wielding tech pistols, tech bows and miniguns to push that tech tier to its biggest offering yet. If you especially quit Ark because of the grind, all of these additions seem to be a draw pulling surprise of punishing removing survival we all dropped into, cold, naked and afraid some years ago. And speaking of that grind, last year Wildcard made the bold decision to double harvesting, experience and taming. So depending on when you last played Ark, where in its early years offered an incredibly long grind of farming anything in the game. You'll find that quest to hit tech tier through leveling and raising an army a much friendlier invitation to what was once an almost impossible task to survive one single night. Rates offered and manipulated further beyond a broad range of official server types than just the PvP or PvE types you probably thought you could choose. Beginner servers, they offer you an easier time against any established players, allowing you to grind to a cap level and tame cap dinos before venturing into the larger world and tussling with the big boys. Arcpocalypse servers, allowing you an even easier grind with three times boosted rates, offering an opportunity to sample everything the game offers in quicker succession, against a timeline where the servers eventually wipe to a dramatic media impact on every map. Small tribes give those who want to play competitively with a group of friends and not worry about giant mega tribes turning up at their doorsteps. Conquest servers giving you an opportunity to recruit a large tribe of 25 players for giant epic battles with alliances off enabling large tribes to really take control of maps and worry less about multiple tribes teaming together against them. And finally classic PvP, 
harking back to a time a lot of people yearned for before tech came onto the scene. With no tech in sight, removing all aberration, extinction and genesis content, and keeping that gameplay at the primitive to metal tiers you may have left over in the past. And if none of those suit your taste, perhaps it's because you'd prefer an easier grind, more frequent admin support or a leisurely pace. There's an unofficial server out there that will probably cater for your ARC experience. Yes, it's a gamble on joining one that plans to remain and halt honest, respectable admins, but do your research through perhaps many of the social art groups out there, or perhaps state your requirements and see who contacts you. There sometimes seems to be more unofficial servers than players at times, so there will always be a server owner who wants you to play on their maps. Whether you want offline raid protection, insta-tame, tech in drops, even everything craftable with fiber, there will be a server for your pace if you spend some time looking. For console players especially, the drawbacks versus playing on PC have, up until now, been incredibly noticeable. However, Wildcard had recently implemented a giant overhaul with the arrival of the new next-gen consoles, offering them a wide variety of graphical improvements. 4K output at between 30 to 60 frames per second, extreme draw distance, extreme level streaming distance, epic sky and atmospherics quality, epic subsurface scattering quality, infinite range high precision screen space ambient occlusion, max texture resolution, 16 times anisotropic filtering, infinite range distance field shadows, terrain self-shadowing, epic dynamic shadow quality, epic ground clutter distance, high precision HDR output, epic post-processing quality, 100 player dedicated server hosting, split screen multiplayer using epic graphic settings, seven times faster loading times, but most importantly to you non-dedicated and split screen players, tetherless gaming. The ability to play with other players without pulling them across the map like they are on an unattachable bungee cord to the hosting player. To date, only Xbox Series X has received the upgrade. However, Wildcard have said it's coming to PS5 and should have by now, which means it can't be too far away to sip some of that next-gen goodness soon. A huge reason to abandon Ark, and I can't blame you, were the many, many, many meshing and duping exploits, as well as a wide variety of bugs that could dampen that survival experience darker than any squid could ink. Sadly, in any competitive game, people will always find a way to cheat to satisfy some unjustified win and certainly so in a game where they can ruin months of work from another player. Somewhat owed to the complexity of Ark's gameplay, the cheater's door was a huge behemoth gate-sized opening to perform a variety of methods in gaining an unfair advantage, increasing as more features were added, with a hard look at climbing picks for example. Now, I'm not saying it's all fixed, it's certainly not, and is, I'm sure, a big reason Wildcard can't wait for a sequel so they can draw the line and preempt this time. But last year especially, a lot of work was performed towards an anti-mesh system, creating barriers that would insta-kill any would-be meshers. Whilst Wildcard are still improving on this one year on, targeting and patching areas used, this did see a 90% decrease in mesh exploits. A dramatic and certainly notable change with less concern of what shouldn't be your base's defeat. Bug and exploit reporting, acknowledgement and action has been more successful than ever, with some notable interest in exploit dedicated YouTube channels being reacted to almost the very next day in some instances. Whilst cheaters will always be there, attempting to invent the next exploit, there's certainly some comfort that Wildcard have been at least somewhat ahead of the patches in recent times and offer some blanket we can feel comfortable in, in 2021. And lastly, but most importantly, where Ark has evolved more than anything of the others on this list. Since its inauguration of a better look in Minecraft with dinos and guns, Ark Survival Evolved is a raw, meat, fleshed out story of lore competing against some of the most popular video game storylines out there. Even Hollywood films, not least helped with the announcement of a superstar-studded lineup of giant, talented, well-known actors working on the animated series and lending voices to the video games. With, of course, the big recent news being Vin Diesel starring as somewhat a lead character in the sequel. What began with a simple survival island developed into a woven tale of self-discovery that I certainly won't ruin here if you've not learned of it. Spread across eventually six maps 
that create a real purpose and end game to pursue for those looking for a scripted adventure. If you've never had the pleasure of delving into the storyline before, now is the best time to jump in as the story comes to something of a close with the last ARC DLC dropping in March and concluding your survivor's journey. Though I mentioned this is a scripted adventure, on the contrary, it's quite the opposite as you're given free roam on how to tackle each challenge given in the game with your equipment of choice. Rocket launchers to race an artifact cave, Spider-Man swing grapple through and race out like Indiana Jones as the minions give chase, face against the bosses with an army of health and melee purpose bus running bread rexes. The choice is ultimately yours to take and whichever you take, you're in for a journey unlike any other you'll have ever seen. I hope you enjoyed this take and would love to hear your comments and feedback. Thanks all for watching kids. If you could drop a like and hit that sub button, it really makes a difference for me and how big I can make it in the ARC YouTuber world. So if you could, it really means a lot. Thank you. My name's Ross Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, peace out.